Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, today's painting is this sunset palm tree. And if you have never painted before in your life, this is an excellent painting to paint um, to start with, let alone even painting at home for the first time. So I'm gonna walk you through the steps. It's gonna be a lot more fun than you realize and you're gonna do better than you expect from yourself. And that's generally the best part about painting. Um, as we go through the process, I want you to be nice to yourself. Be kind, um, don't overanalyze your process or what you're creating. And I want you to get through the entire painting before you look at it and uh, analyze what you've done. So as we paint today, in the description box below, there is gonna be a link for a supply kit. And that supply kit is everything that you need to create this particular painting. With that being said, if you wanna switch out colors on today's painting, or you wanna do this painting a second time and switch out colors, I highly recommend that. Um, I'm just gonna give you a uh, kind of a general overview of how to paint this painting, but I encourage that you add your own creativity, add your own colors, add other elements into it, but again, make it your own, because that's kind of the beauty of art. Uh, so if you haven't subscribed to the channel, do that. Check out my other videos. Uh, most of these are geared towards first time a beginner painters to kind of take away that scary aspect of painting at home. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions for what you want in the future, please leave a comment below. I do my best to respond as quickly as possible. And uh, yeah, I think that's enough talking. Let's go ahead and get started painting. All right, guys, this is going to be a really fun painting today. I hope you're ready. So head on over to where you have your setup and turn on your favorite music. It just kind of helps relax you. And as always, I want you to take your progress photos. So in today's painting, we're going to kind of grid off or put a few lines on our canvas to mark off our space. And then we're going to be filling up the background. So we're using the large flat brush or medium flat brush, and we're gonna make a light pink. So starting with the white, add a touch of red to make just a light, light pink. And then we're gonna go up to the top and go down uh, maybe about four or five inches and place a dot on the left-hand side. Doesn't have to be exact. Then we're gonna go place a dot in kind of the same area on the right-hand side. And if you need to, you can put your finger on the top corner and your thumb on the dot, hold that position, go to the other side of the canvas and place the dot. That way it kind of keeps you in the general same area. And then you're gonna connect those dots, drawing a line all the way across the canvas. Then from that line, I want you to go up about two inches, draw another line across the canvas. Again, doesn't have to be perfect. We're just going for a general area. And then from the bottom of the canvas, I want you to go up about uh, five to six inches and draw a line. Now take a progress picture just so you can go, yep, that was fun. <laughs> but these are just gonna help us place when we start placing our colors in. All right, so we're taking that light pink and you can kind of see that as I mix it, it doesn't have to be an exact science. Just kind of grabbing a touch of red with a big chunk of white. Kind of slap it on your background and then I realized it was darker than I wanted. So I just grabbed a chunk of the white and slapped it on top of that and mixed it on the canvas. Now as you paint, try a variety of brush strokes. You can make X marks, you can use the full width of the brush, or you can turn the brush sideways and use the skinny version. You can even finger paint if you want. All right, so we're gonna take it from that first first line that we drew and we're going to fill in from there above with our light pink. All right, now we're actually throwing some red right on top of that on the top. Just kind of drag it across and then wipe your brush off and then you're going to move it and mix it into that light pink on the canvas. This is called wet on wet blending. And we're keeping the color a little bit darker at the top of the canvas. And you can reapply this step. And as you're blending, you wanna use light pressure with your brush. 
I am just kind of holding it perpendicular to the canvas and just using the last couple millimeters of the brush to kind of blend this red paint into the lighter pink. There is no right or wrong way to do this. Just kind of enjoy the process of moving paint across the canvas. And if you're holding your breath right now, take a deep breath for me. We do tend to hold our breath when we're doing something for the first time or we're a little nervous. It's perfectly human. All right, so now we're making, going back to that light pink, going down to the other line on the bottom that we drew and just going right on top of that. And again, I wanted this to be a little bit lighter, so I just took that white and painted right on top of the pink that I just put on there and then directly mixing it on the canvas. This is actually a lot of fun, so just kind of, like I said earlier, get lost in the process of moving the paint on the canvas. All right, and kind of filling that into the bottom space, which leaves us kind of that middle, maybe three to four inch space of white canvas showing. We're gonna put a dark color in there. And just like we did at the top, you can take some of that direct red, that straight red, slap it on top of your light pink, and then we're gonna kind of mix the two, kind of creating these dark and light spaces. And here you can see just using a light pressure, moving my brush back and forth, blending. Now go ahead and pause the video, take your progress photo. And we're gonna clean the brush. Maybe. All right, so we grab some purple paint and we are putting this on wet paint. That red and pink is still wet. And again, you kind of slap it on there using light pressure, just making a few darker areas. And if you want to finger paint and blend this with your fingers, go right ahead. It's quite satisfying. And remember right now you're an abstract painter. We're not going for anything specific. We're just slapping some colors on the canvas, moving them around and move it on to the next step. All right, so clean your brush really good. We're gonna move into light purple next. And you don't want a whole lot of color on your brush as you make your lighter ones. So put a little bit of white aside, gonna add a touch of purple to it to make that light lavender, that light purple. And we're gonna fill in that remaining space of our canvas, the middle three inches hanging out there. And we're gonna be bringing it right up to both of those sections of pink. If you happen to overlap them a little bit, that's okay. And just like using the red earlier, we're gonna slap some purple right on top of the lighter shade just to kind of distinguish where our horizon line is and add a little bit more darker areas. If you wanna switch out colors or you prefer one color to another, you have full permission to switch this out and make it your own. If you wanna do this whole painting in shades of orange and yellow, go right ahead, switch it up. Just use this as a guide. I encourage everybody to find a creative outlet on a monthly basis. So if you paint this a couple of times and switch out colors, awesome. All right, so now grabbing a bit more of that straight purple. Going right above that horizon line, I want a bit more contrast there. Again, all these steps are optional. You can make your colored background, your abstract background, anything you want. What's gonna define this composition is when we put the palm trees on there. Again, right now you're an abstract painter, anything goes. And again, if you need to, you wipe your brush off, so that way you can do a little bit more blending. It is called dry brush blending. Pretty thing, pretty straightforward. <laughs> All right, and anything you wanna do to your background, you wanna do it while it's wet, so that way you can get a little bit of blending. This paint does dry in about 15 to 20 minutes, 
So it does encourage you to kind of work a little bit faster and in a way that encourages you not to think too much. I want you to kind of embrace your inner five-year-old when you paint and just have fun. All right, so pause the video, take your progress photo. We're gonna move into the small flat brush or medium flat brush. And we're gonna make a light yellow mixture. So we're gonna start with white, add a touch of yellow to make a light yellow. And we're gonna go right over the horizon line, that darker purple line that we put in there. And we're gonna create our, our moon or our setting sun. And it is right above that horizon line, so it's kind of a half circle. And I did let my background dry before I moved into this step. Um, so that way the yellow would be a bit more opaque and it wouldn't blend with the purple. So again, this half circle is the sunset or even moonrise, depending on where you live. And we're going to have some radiating kind of horizontal lines above and below our sun. So holding the brush perpendicular to the canvas, very light pressure, and just moving back and forth. These can be thick lines, thin lines, doesn't have to be anything perfect, but we're giving the hint that our sun is radiating color as it sets, or our moon is radiating color as it sets or rises. And you will notice that the yellow may show up a little bit differently on the purple compared to the pink. So feel free to adjust your yellow if you want more contrast. And it still kind of looks like an abstract painting right now. Don't analyze it too much. All right, so going back to that large flat brush or your medium flat brush. All right, so pause the video, take your progress photo, and going back to that large flat brush or even medium flat brush, we're gonna use straight blue paint and we're gonna use just the tips of the brush for this. So we're holding that flat brush perpendicular to the canvas, very light pressure, and making these kind of wavy lines horizontally from that moon, from that horizon line down. And what we're creating is the illusion of water ripples on the surface of the water. And we're not completely filling in the space. You're allowing some of the color from underneath to show through. And again, we're creating the illusion of this rippling water reflecting the sky above it. I do want you overlapping these lines, but not filling up the space entirely. And when you kind of get from the horizon line to the bottom, take a look from a distance, see what it looks like and see if you maybe need to add some more water ripples somewhere, maybe a little bit closer together by the horizon line, maybe some that uh, kind of go off the edge of the canvas to give the indication that the water is greater than the canvas space. And I did kind of leave the center where I didn't do a whole lot of lines. If you end up filling in that space or just have a few lines there, totally okay. If you'd like to introduce other colors, maybe a lighter blue or even pure white, you can do the same effect and just layer more of these lines on top of each other. And it does create some nice depth and illusion. So just giving you extra options to go with. All right, take your time. You're doing a great job. Take a deep breath. So pause the video, take your progress photo. 
All right, so we're using the medium flat brush or even your small pointy brush. And we're gonna use black paint and we're gonna kind of put our horizon or our island on there. And then we'll move into putting our palm trees and the reflection of our palm trees on there. So starting on the right hand side or left hand side, I went down about a halfway uh, in between our horizon line and the bottom of the canvas and made the top of our island just kind of this wavy shape. And then went a little below that and made a straight line across. You can make your island shape anything that you want. And then kind of filled in the space and we do want opaque coverage. So feel free to apply that black a little bit thicker. All right, pause the video, take your progress photo. And on a scrap sheet of paper, I recommend that you practice these steps for your palm tree. And what you're gonna do is I'm still using that small or the medium flat brush or your small pointy brush, your call, where you want your palm tree to end in the sky. Place your brush there and then allow gravity to kind of pull your arm down as you, as the trunk of the palm tree meets the island. And then because these are reflecting, go to the bottom of the island and just kind of mimic the reverse shape going off the bottom of the canvas. It does not have to be exact. And if it happens to go in the wrong direction, that's okay. It's just a different angle. And you can add as many or as few palm trees as you want on your painting. And it does keep it simple to do the tree trunk and then do your mimic reflection at the same time so you don't get confused later. For the palm fronds, for the arms of our palm tree, you're gonna start at the end of the palm tree and the first two lines, I want you to kind of, they kind of hug or reach back towards the trunk of the palm tree and get those two in place. And then you're gonna build your other, um, palm fronds on top of that, that kind of radiate out, kind of like the spokes of an umbrella. And depending on how many palm trees you put on your canvas, some of them may overlap. Now for the leaves, they're gonna be little dash marks and each dash mark is a leaf on our palm tree. And on this painting, I'm only actually putting the leaves on the bottom side. In some of my other videos and paintings, you'll notice where I put the leaves on both sides of the palm frond. So feel free to check out the other videos and figure out which palm tree style you like the best. And again, when you're doing the leaves, overlap those brush strokes. You can add a touch of water to your black paint to kind of help with the fluidity. But again, you never want your brush dripping wet with water. And I want you to do all the leaves on all the palm fronds before you stop and look at your painting, analyze your painting, or look at your painting from a distance. It does look really funky if you only see leaves on one palm frond and you have these weird shapes shooting out the other side. So on your palm trees, do all your leaves first before you take a break or before you look at your painting from a distance. And this does get better and more comfortable the more that you paint. You are getting muscle memory on how to hold the brush, how to use pressure. You're learning how to mix your paint and you're learning to hopefully not think too much and just paint. We all need kind of creative outlets and this can be one of them for you. All right, you're doing a good job. All right, that's a nice looking palm tree. <clears throat> Try that again. All right, that's a nice looking palm tree. All right, so go ahead, you're gonna finish your other palm trees. I'm adding a few extra water lines on the bottom. You can do those in black or in blue. And then again, we're just gonna repeat those steps for each palm tree. So put in your palm fronds, and then you're gonna put the leaves on there. Remember to breathe and relax. Just the fact that you're painting makes you successful already. I 
tell my students the only way to fail at painting is to not paint at all. And I do have a couple of groups now that have been following the channel and they'll all get together and paint and then they send me a video or pictures of what the whole group painted. Uh, and it's really cool. So please, as you're painting these, as you do them as a group, as you uh, do them by yourself or do them in a school setting, uh, send me pictures. I really like to see what you guys paint. I like to see that people actually watch the video and it makes me smile. It really makes my day when I see these photos. All right, so great job. Really proud of you for painting at home. Really honored that you took time out of your day to watch one of my videos and follow along. So keep up the good work and keep on painting. Until next time, cheers. Hey guys, I hope your paintings turned out really nice and I hope you enjoyed the process. Hopefully you are more relaxed right now than when you first started your painting. And keep up the good work. I want you to try to find a way to paint at least once a month. It's really healthy for you. Um, as you're uploading these to social media, please tag me, Paint with Lovejoy or at Paint with Lovejoy. Um, your feedback, your pictures really help me move forward and create more videos because I am a solo show here. So seeing what you guys do at home, like I said, gives me enough motivation to kind of paint and continue to produce these videos. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that. Leave any uh, comments, questions, concerns, issues. Leave those in the comment box below. I try to respond as quickly as possible. Um, but again, it's through your interaction in this community that we're creating that we're all going to grow together. So thank you so much for taking time out of your day to paint with me. I'm honored that you chose one of my videos. I'm glad you had a good time and I look forward to painting with you in the future. Cheers. Some wiggling leaves in the le in the wind. Plane set. Uh, let's try that again.